welcome back for just one more row, little knitting vlog we got going on here. And I figure I'll give you guys a few updates about what's been going on this week. First off, what I'm wearing right now, this is the uh, Prince of Wales feather cardigan. It's a shoulder closure poof sleeve, um, and I'll include some more close-ups of this. Uh, but it is one of the Australia Project ones that I've made. Um, it is comfortable, although, as usual, a little bit short. And if you'd like something that has a nice repeating pattern to it, I do recommend doing it in a lighter color than what I went with, um, just so the design stands out a little bit more. Uh, there are pleats at the shoulder, and my advice to you is do not try to do that and watch a movie at the same time. It will not end well. <laughs> Uh, there, I think there were sh optional shoulder pads in here, um, and I did not put them in. And I do recommend kind of making the, the collar a little bit tighter. I wish I had done that. A little tighter, a little taller as well, just because I happen to like the turtleneck, mock turtleneck look. So what have I been doing this week? I don't have any finished objects uh, because I have three bigger projects going on right now. I'm working on it and I've been making some plans for the future, but we'll get into that in a moment. To start with, you guys may remember this. Well, I've gotten that far on the skirt. And like I said, it is uh, very circle skirt-esque. I'll try to get some footage of me actually wearing this um, and some close-ups of the details on the lace. But I have made progress on it. It looks like it will be a skirt. So that's project one. I really, and I have to admit, I'm really enjoying this. This is not like a huge, it doesn't require huge amounts of thoughts for me, if that makes sense. All I'm doing is I went around the center um, and I picked up from that band and I just continued with the stitch pattern that was up on the bust. Except that every five repetitions of the pattern, or every ten rounds, however you want to look at it, um, I'm adding one double crochet into that three double crochet shell. And so then in another five repetitions or ten rounds, I add another one in until I have six double crochets in that kind of shell then I take and I split them. And that's basically what I'm doing this whole way down. So I'm almost done with the the second set of shells, but that does let me control how large the circle skirt is getting, uh, because otherwise if I increase too fast, then I end up essentially with a tutu, and that's not really what I'm looking for. I wouldn't say full circle, I think it's more like somewhere between a three quarter and a full circle skirt. But it is coming together really nicely. I debated, opening up part of this other lace, but the more I think about it, the more I think that just sticking with what I've already established and just following that all the way through would look really good. This project will need to be lined because it is very, very see-through. So I've been trying to figure out like what kind of colors or anything will, will work with that. We have a fabric store near us, so maybe once I've, once I finish this, I will go up to the fabric store and see what we can find, and then we can watch me fumble my way through trying to figure out how to line something. Oh, huzzah, huzzah. This should be entertaining, because as I've mentioned before on here, I don't sew. That is project one. The other one that I have been working on, I'll be kind of gentle with this one, because it's very slippery is my matron's lacy blouse. You guys have already seen how the front of this looks, but I did get the sleeve cap fully put on, and I am down to here on the sleeve. So once you get the sleeve cap on, you kind of just have to get the, the little bottom section to, to match up, but that's not very hard. It actually comes out relatively even. I don't have any puckering in this that I can see thus far. Um, and I don't have any areas where it's tight either, like weird stitchness, if that makes sense. If you've ever knitted something on, you know what I'm talking about. Where it's not like it doesn't line up, but it doesn't line up quite the same on both sides. From there, you work a, a couple inches on the sleeve, and then you start decreasing. 
Now this is supposed to have fluffier, wider sleeves, and then you get down, and then it has a tighter cuff. So I'm gonna do my sleeves at being 13 inches from my arm side, so my armpit down, which should put my sleeve right about there on my arm to have a longer cuff. I know that this silk does stretch, so kind of keeping some of that in mind, and I know lace does stretch, uh, but in the image, in the original image, part of what got me about this was the sleeves, so I wanna keep those a bit puffier. And you know, and I'll have a link down below so you can look at the original. I would say, actually, again, this pattern is working up pretty well. This is just an absolute walk in the park. Other than you are going to need to change your row count, and I added in one stitch to the front and the back, and then I'm, I'm adding them one stitch into the sleeves. And honestly, that's just to keep the pattern symmetrical so it's a little bit easier for me to follow along so I don't end up with like weirdness when I'm doing my decreasing. And I do recommend for the arm side increases by the armpit. I thought those were gonna be far more noticeable because I did some areas that were flatter, but once I've worked it up, they're not as noticeable. So that's what's been going on there, but I'll give you guys more updates as I have more of that finished. And then we have the color work piece that I've been working on. Now you guys have seen this swatch up here on the board for a couple weeks now, but I've started and I'm recording for it. Um, I'm gonna try doing a voiceover for this. This will be something interesting. But here's the front. Um, I do have this one and I have worn it. I decided I wanna do this one in pinks and purples. And I figured this is, this is my version of a vintage pattern. I went ahead and changed quite a bit about it, but it is very, very, very heavily and obviously inspired by a vintage pattern that I have here. And I'll put down what the original is. I've gotten that far on it over the last couple of days. This here is like, I think about four or five hours work, not including the ribbing, because I did the ribbing separately. Um, and like a silly goose, I did not do that on camera. But uh, ribbing is not exactly exciting to watch. So hopefully the, uh, the color work part will be more fun. Um, and part of the reason I'm recording this, the way that I am, one, to do a voiceover for it, but two, to show something interesting. So when I do color work, and this is maybe a little bit different for other people, um, I know many people don't like working color work flat because they don't like purling in their color work. Uh, so they don't want the strands facing them. Essentially, they don't wanna be looking at this side and trying to figure it out. I too do not like purling color work. I find it annoying and fiddly. Uh, so I don't do it. <laughs> in other words, I don't turn my work. I knit in both directions. Um, which is a very, very, very useful skill. And I strongly encourage everyone learn how to do that. Learn how to knit in both directions. So as I'm going through and actually working this whole thing on camera is to kind of show this is what it, this is what the process looks like. And I pick in one direction, I throw in the other. It doesn't matter. In my opinion, it does not matter the method you use, whether you're doing English, whether you're doing continental, whether you're doing combination, whether you're doing Portuguese, whatever, I don't, I don't care if you have to do it on a trampoline, so long as you can obtain the specific knit stitch um, and the effect that you are going for. That is the only correct or incorrect thing when it comes to knitting or really any crafting is did you obtain the effect that you are going for. And then we can just talk about efficiency if you want to. So yeah, I knit in both directions. I find it works much easier for me. And because I also encourage, if you can learn how to do stuff flat, you can learn how to do all kinds of things. It opens up a lot of possibilities because then you're not having to worry about doing things in the round. You're not worried about steaking. Um, one thing you will find with me, I don't steak because what I do is I recycle a lot of my, you know, if I can recycle the yarn, I'd like to do it. And if a project has been steaked, I cannot recycle the yarn, which means I have to recycle the project in a different way. Um, and sometimes that way is not always super viable for me in my life situation. So how many pillow covers does one need? So I don't steak. There's like nothing wrong with it. It's just, 
it's not something that I do. So I encourage you to learn how to do something flat. Even if you decide you never ever want to use it again or use that skill, you at least have it as a possibility. So if you have to do that one off project where something has worked flat, you can. And so if you get into vintage or historic patterns, odds are they are going to be worked flat uh, just because you didn't have circular knitting needles and from what I can tell, using double points, especially long double points, was not super common all over the place. That is just based on the, the, the sheer number of patterns that I have looked at. I could be wrong on that, and please, if there's a source that you guys have out there and are willing to share, please send it to me. I would love to be able to read through it. I do not claim to be right or the smartest person on the internet. I'm just somebody who has read a lot <laughs> and is opinionated. So, uh, but I'm completely open to changing that opinion. You know, um, it's not set in stone. Anyway, those are the projects I've been working on. Hey everybody, it's Editing Joe here. I know in the video normally this is the point where I do a book review and I start rambling about something that's like crafting or crafting adjacent. I went ahead and looked at the footage and realized that what I was ended up talking about, well, I really liked it, but it deserves its own video. Uh, because to, to get in depth, I just wasn't happy with how it turned out. So hi, you get me today. Uh, and next week we'll get you guys some of the, the longer videos because those topics really deserve their own like 30 minute segment. So yeah, that's what's going on. I hope you guys have a great day and uh, I'll see you next week. Have fun, make stuff, bye.